All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. And today, we're going to cover the Rails Basic. Juju! <laughs> I like the emote. This is the new suit that you get when you complete all of the missions. And it's called the Conductor Suit. And the emote I just showed you is something that you also get when you complete the missions as well. Let's cover the basics of the rail system. There are several posts that you can put down. You have a short rail post. And you also have a tall rail post. These are created in the small printer. And you get this little bundle, the rail bundle. You can attach it. It, If you have nothing in your auxiliary slots, it attaches to your auxiliary slots. And you can see that they have 10 uses. This is the short rail post. You can rotate it using seeing V. And when you place the rail post down, it produces a rail line. When you go to connect another rail post, you'll see a ghosty line where the rail is going to be. There is an indicator on the rail post itself. You can see as I move it, it goes from white to blue and then also to red. Red is too far. You've extended beyond the length of your rail line and you need to go back to the blue area or the white area in order to place it down. In order for you to get a straight line, really walking backwards is the only only way for you to measure out a straight line. It's a little bit difficult going forward to see where your rail and how your rail is being placed if you don't turn around and go back and look at it. So for those of you that are really nitpicky and really want your rail line straight, my suggestion to you is to uh, turn around, face backwards before you place the rail down so that you have a somewhat straight line. Now, this happens to be true for either the short or the tall rail post. The big difference about the tall rail post is that you're able to then go over another rail line so that you can stack your rails for a rail system like this. Of course, you could always connect these guys together so that you create some sort of loop or figure eight system so you can see how this works. Now, in order for the rail line to work at all, you are going to need either a rail car or a rail engine now if i didn't say this before all of these schematics are easy to get and unlock there's only one schematic that would require you to go to another planet and that is the rail station because it requires titanium you would have to have gone off and gotten some titanium in order to make it but you don't necessarily need a rail station and you don't necessarily need even a rail engine to make the rail run you can have simply just a rail car attached to the system and it will run all by itself. Now it is significantly slower than if you would use a rail engine, but you can make your train system work without a station and without engines. If you happen again to put the engine on, you'll see that it runs significantly faster with an engine on it. Currently, I'm in creative mode just to show you the rail system without having to build up. But engines and cars do require power. So the engine itself requires three units of power per second, and each additional car requires one unit of power per second. Luckily, they've done the math for you. So once you place this down on the rail and hover over either the rail car or the rail engine, it'll tell you the total draw of your rail system. You can either have five rail cars and one rail engine or six rail cars to complete a, a train. This is the maximum length of a train that you can have. And you can even have multiple cars running on a single rail line. Of course, if one happens to stop, the other train will continue to run until its obstruction is removed. So I've stopped this train, but as soon as I remove this train, my other train will continue to move because I didn't tell it to stop. The other piece to the rail system is the rail junction bundle. It can also attach to the auxiliary slot on your backpack. But junctions are used to divert your line from one location to another. So you can see here, I've got a little scenario set up where I've set up two junctions and I can bypass my train into this other little track over here and I can have this little track go somewhere else or reconnect back to the main line. 
This is extremely helpful when you want to park your trains in like kind of a little station or depot. So in this case, this first train stopped because the rail is not connected. But as my next train comes up, I can switch the junction and have my train bypass and continue on down the track. So this all can be automated. This is not something that is um, static. I'm going to cover automation more extensively in another video. Like I said, this is just the basics of setting up a train. So this is an example of using junctions on a single rail line without a station. But what about a station? But the stations have some useful commands associated to it. Each station will have a dialogue that has two commands that you can alter. One is the stopping mode, where this station is the stop is currently disabled. Or you can stop all uncalled cars, or you can stop all cars. There is also a station loading mode, where loading is currently disabled by default, but you can have all stop cars load, or all stop cars unload. All right, I've set up a little example to show you how the stations will load and unload. So you can see that I've got a couple auto arms, some storages. And uh, remember, I have this set up to load and the other one set up to unload. And I have a rail engine and a rail cart on this line just to show this example off. So let's go ahead and call the rail car over to us. And once it gets here, I'm going to set my output to output. Let's rotate this around a little bit. And you can see what's happening is that it's putting it on the station and the cart is automatically getting loaded up with stuff. Now the auto arm is going to continue to keep loading up the station because it has a couple extra slots and you can put storage on here if you'd like. And if we send the car off to the next station, this is set to unload. You will see it automatically unloads and you can put the stuff inside of another storage. So think of it in a way that you've got some machine doing something, an extractor, a chemistry lab, a smelter, whatever. Your train rolls up, it loads up, and then it goes to the next point and it unloads it. Now, unfortunately, the rail station does not send another command that says, hey, once this is completely unloaded, go and do something. So you actually have to be back at the rail system or at some sort of post to call the car back. And as soon as I call the car, it gets loaded up from the storage. And again, like I said, you're going to have to send the rail off. And you can see it unload. And then the auto arm will unload the items. I'm not going to get into automation of this yet. That's a whole nother video. But here's the basic use of using the two stations to be able to load and unload goods. When placing down rail lines, you need to be aware that the rail line will actually deform the terrain based on how the rail is going to proceed. So in this case, let's say I want my rail line to go something like this. And you'll notice as soon as I place it down, the rail line actually carved out some of the terrain. Now this is to enable the rail car to go from point A to point B. This could have some sort of interesting effect if you're trying to carve through a mountain or if you're trying to carve through the tunnel system. It'll automatically deal with the terrain if it encounters an obstacle. So in this case, I want my rail line to be somewhere over here. And you can see that it carved through that it'll allow the rail to be able to go on this track. Now, it doesn't build new terrain for you. So in the case that I want to put a rail line down here, it doesn't extend this ground out for me. So, you know, if you're in a cave system and you don't have any soil for you, it's not an easy way to make a road. It's not going to magically make some sort of soil for you you're going to have to do that yourself. So I made a little landing here. Now I can get up and continue on with my rail line. You notice that you can put rail lines practically anywhere. If you want to put it on the ceiling, you can put it on the ceiling. You can put it on the wall. You're just going to have a very interesting experience when you start using this rail because your camera is going to go all over and act really, really strange. It's also a little bit difficult inside of the cave system 
to place it on top of ceilings and the like because of the camera angle and I found it a little bit challenging when I wanted to try to accomplish that. So riding this train would be rather interesting because of the way that the track is laid out. But if you really wanted to do some spins and some loops, you absolutely can. I can imagine all of the roller coasters that people are going to make with the rail system. And for those of you that are wondering about length, 10 rail lines is this long. Which is a pretty significant length, and you could probably circumnavigate the planet with about 20 of these. I don't know, I'm guessing, but that's a pretty long pack for a single track of rail posts. Now, if you happen to finish the storyline on top of getting the conductor suit and the emote, you also get a special train called Coal. Now, Coal is significantly faster than the other engines. So you can see if I place an engine on this track right here and activate it, you can see how it runs. But if I happen to put coal on the track and activate it, you see that he's significantly faster than the previous train. And matter of fact, he's going to actually catch up to this train in no time. So I would say coal is almost double the speed of the normal rail engine. So it's worth getting, but you can only get one. Of course, unless you're in creative mode, then you can have as many as you want. But, like the snails, coal can be reclaimed at any location. So, you can only have one coal, but you can call him anywhere that you've got uh, mission log access and bring him to your location. Just don't do that if coal happens to be on a rail line or working a rail line because you're going to break your rail line. <laughs> Again, you only get access to this if you complete the storyline in the missions. Final thing to note about the rail lines, the rail lines do carry power and oxygen. So as you can see, the rail line right now has uh, these two additional slots and as you put power on them, you can see that there's a yellow bar that appears showing that power is running through the rail line. And then also, if you have oxygen on there, you can see that oxygen is running through the rail line. And it does provide oxygen to you at each post. So maybe this is going to replace extenders because it's highly more useful than extenders are, where extenders can only transfer power one way. This is multi-directional, and it also provides oxygen. All right, well, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be covering automation of the rail lines in a completely separate video because the automation of the rail lines is a little bit tricky, but uh, once you wrap your head around it, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't already, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. would love to have you in the community. And if you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.